Hello my soccer universe, let's wrap the seasons in Austria and Germany. In Austria not everything is decided, there's one last playoff that we'll be talk talking about, but Germany is all done. We have the last title going to Leipzig, we have Stuttgart surviving. And in Austria, uh, I think Lask had a really nice last home game, where we of course have been. Uh, the Relegation was already decided, championship was already decided. Uh, we had a dramatic promotion decided to going into the Bundesliga. I'll talk about that before we talk about what is actually happening in the Bundesliga. And then it went down for fourth place between Rapid Vienna and Austria Vienna. And honestly, Rapid Vienna were really, 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 really lucky in that one. Uh, given that they had such a bad season overall when you think especially in the derbies where Austria Vienna steamrolled them most of the time that they finished ahead of them does not shed a good light on Austria Vienna either so I thought this was a very uh, interesting finale also a little bit drama there and the drama is not done yet for Austria Vienna for sure but I want to start actually, and although this happened last, with the promotion battle in the second league in Austria, uh, where it was one spot, it was between Graz, GAK as we call them in, uh, in Austria, and Blau-Weiß Linz, the local rival of Lusk, and I may at one point do a video on that rivalry because I think it's kind of an interesting story and kind of a unique story as well. Uh, ahead of the uh, match day, it was that GRK had a one-point lead over blau linz They had to go to Dornbirn, where blau linz at home had to play Sturm Graz, but the amateur team. And it went as a, a little bit bad for blau linz in the beginning, because uh, they had a rather timid first half with Sturm Graz. Uh, at the amateur team actually enjoying quite some possession. They could play freely. Did not have many, uh, had, they didn't have much to play, but they had already secured survival. And uh, Sturm actually took the lead through an own goal by a departing captain. I think Schusswendner was his um, name. Whereas in the other game, I think it was open, but GRK had plenty of chances. Uh, he even then into the sec second half, they really wrapped up, uh, ramped up the pressure, hit the um, uh, woodwork, I think, twice at one point, uh, missed the goal from a very, very short distance. Um, it seemed not going for them. And also, this was played in Dornbirn, far in the west of Aus Austria. So basically, the Graz of, of fans had to come all the way from the east of Austria, and there were massively many there. They were over... I um, mean, the stadium holds about 4,000, more than half of which were for GRK fans. So, uh, quite a big scene there. After the half, blau Linz quickly e equalized through Roni Valdo. Ha were then the better team, had a few chances, but also could have conceded. I think uh, Stur the Sturm amateurs even hitting the crossbar. So, again, a third time that the woodwork did not fall in the favor of GRK. And then... A phantom goal was given for blau weiss Linz, where Mitrovic had it on the underside of the crossbar. It, maybe with some spin, goes onto the post and goes out. And there's no conclusive image, there's no VAR, there is no goal and technology, there's no conclusive image whether that ball had crossed the line. But it gives blau weiss the lead and at that point they were in the first place. It's even better for them since Balotelli, <laughs> I remember that, that they, who they got from the Thai league, uh, had Dorn been in 2-2 to lead. And so into stoppage time, blau -Weiss looked rather safe. Yes, GRK get a goal back uh, in the 96th minute, but it was only a minute or two to play. And it ends 1-1 and huge scenes in Linz. They played at a very, very small stadium this time around, but they're also moving into their new stadium uh, this uh, in, in a month from now. So they will go in the Bundesliga and for the first time in 26 years there will be a Linz Derby uh, in the Bundesliga which I'm two minds about it. I'm excited that there are two teams from Linz although they're the rival but I think it's good to have this rivalry in the Bundesliga. Uh, 
I am never excited about derbies because of all the crap that comes around it. I hope that blau weiss Linz are not like a Reed that only play hard when it goes against Lusk, that they also realize that you have to pick up the points against other opponents. However, I think it's an enrichment for the Bundesliga. They have a, the stadium is rather small, the new ones, only 5,000, but the location right on the Danube are um, relatively close to downtown, I think is a pretty nice one as well so yeah uh that is exciting in that sense also exciting because i know quite a few blow vice fans and yeah i'm not the only one who is arrived for the bundesliga but that's a good thing yeah, overall however commiseration commiserations to gear car uh who are a very traditional team and they would have completed an eight year run going from the eighth tier up maybe it was happening next season Let's go back to the Austrian Bundesliga uh, and to Lask, where we had our last home game. Yes, we missed the one against Salz Salzburg, but this time we all went. Against Austria Vienna, it was a 5 o'clock kickoff, uh, which uh, had great weather, but we were all fully in the sun for, 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 for that, but we were all very well uh, versed for that. It was a game where Lask had nothing to play for. Uh, third place was cemented, you couldn't get up, you could, couldn't get down. Austria Vienna though had everything to lose here because they were at that point in fourth place. So they needed the points and they had a big fan contingent coming up. Unfortunately, while I think that the Austria Vienna fans and the Lask fans traditionally are very much uh, the, uh, similar, like, you know, um, similar league, not uh, working class, but rather, um, you know, uh, bourgeois in a way, uh, the the, Aust the Austria fans, I have to say, acted. This was the first time in the stadium where I really felt that there was an uh, away fan fan base that was really hostile. Not even the Rapid fans did that. So that was a little bit of a damper for me. There were also quite some Austria fans sitting around us, uh, which largely behaved. But there were a few that kind of were a little bit nasty. And I have unfortunately a sad history with Austria Vienna. Because the only time that I was a minor victim of some violence at a football game happened in Vienna at an Austria Vienna game. Uh, where some fans just pushed me and my friends. Fortunately it didn't happen more but they just went and uh, checked us into uh a fence which yeah was not that was the only time that i experienced violence um and so i always always have a little asterisk but the game went well for lask in the first half within four minutes nakamura made, made it one nil then it should have been two i mean uh i think uh mustafa missed one i think jules had a place this was an absolute destruction of austria vienna with only one goal and i mean i i, I turned half half had happened to my wife and said we should have we should lead more and we got punished immediately after the half with Fitz getting an e e equalizer. It was a lengthy VAR review, uh, whether it was offside or not, it was not off offside. And then uh, there was a really good shout for a penalty for Austria Vienna as well. That fortunately was not given. However, Coach Kuba reacted. He, of course, being a rapid ilk, which, you know, always plays into, he reacted well. Brought on Ljubicic, Uso, Goigen and Jovicic. And then in the last 10 minutes, last kick in the next gear, Austria Vienna, who really needed that win. Because at the same time, Rapid Vienna was winning against Sturm Graz. They really needed that win and they couldn't get it. And it was Ljubicic after a brilliant pass from Goigenger who makes it 2-1 and then laid on Moses Uso, who had already missed a big one. And both Ljubicic and Uso had hit the woodwork, the right one and the left one, uh, the post. That both of them get the goals was really, really cool. As I said, Uso then from empty net can pull put it in. Uh, three will win for Lask. It was great to see the season at the home stadium end this way. The last game, don't want to talk much about. But as I said, it was a bad result for us. Austria because Sturmgras had a 2-0 lead at Rapid. But just before the half, Burg uh, Burgstall and Kerschbaum equalized it. And Marco Grull get the win for Rapid Vienna, which was huge for, for, for them. And uh, Rapid Vienna, this was the one thing, yes, it probably helped that they play against the Sturm Graz and also didn't have much to play for. But that was a really, really, really big win for them because it uh, they leapfrog Austria Vienna with a much more favorable draw going into it. And Salzburg could celebrate the title also coming back from a 2-0 down at a half time even. But then Cesco and the uh, double by Adamo ah, give Salzburg the lead, who were playing in swiftly nice new black jerseys with golden accents to celebrate their 10th title in a row. Yeah, whatever we want to say, uh, Salzburg is just 
they're winning. They're the best team in Aus 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 Austria. That's, that's all I can and want to say about that. Then, last day, it was more or less. Uh, in the lower part, we had that Austria Lustenau with a 5-1 over Hartberg emphatically got into uh, the Conference League playoff. We had uh, Wolfsburg securing fourth place with a, a first place with a 2-1 over Reed. So, uh, and I forgot to mention previous round, the 2-0 of Hartberg relegated Reed, but you know, it was not that well, they, they were more or less re er, er, relegated there already. Uh, it was ridiculous to fight for the last... Uh, playoff spot a conference league playoff spot um before you go into playoff to then qualify for the other playoff for the conference league it's a lot of playoff there but fourth spot actually gives you the european uh, uh battle with rapid vienna losing 2-1 at austria klagenfurt that's not what they needed so uh with a win austria vienna actually could go ahead of rapid again they find themselves down uh, through penalty by Koita and for a long as of time there was nothing happening. Rapid were safe. Uh, even a Konate goal was then disallowed, but late on Andy Grover just gets an equalizer for Aus Austria Vienna. Then it's a long stop, 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 stop time, eight minutes. And Austria Vienna get two huge chances, especially one by Tabakovic, where he is alone in front of goal, assisted by Gruber. All he has to put his has to get it past the keeper. And then later on, Ramftl um, misses an empty net with a header. It was right there for them because the game in Klagenfurt was all, already done, but Austria Vienna cannot get it. Then they say, well, I'd rather be in fifth place than to lose to Klagenfurt in this way uh, as Rapid Vienna did. But you know, Rapid Vienna are in fourth place. That Sturm then beat Lask was not a big, 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 big surprise. Maybe the 2 0 was a tad too high, but you know, it was a game that not really, didn't really matter. Although there were two late yellow cards for Michael and Horvat, which I found rather curious overall. So, yeah, uh, with that, then uh, we had the playoff setup with Wolfsburg having to play Austria Lustenau uh, for a spot who will play against Austria Wien in a two legged playoff and all played within a week. That's why the um, lower playoff had already the games played on Friday. So that Monday, Thursday, and Saturday and Sunday there can be the games. It's it's a crazy, crazy schedule. The game happened yesterday, the first one. Wolfsburg were the big favorites, dominated the game for most of the time. Austria Lustenau did not even have a shot on goal. They get the penalty, a deserved penalty laid on. Baribo scores the equalizer, uh, the go-ahead goal. And then it was just desperation time for Austria Lustenau, uh, who then put on all the offensive power that they could have. And wouldn't you have it with the last header of the game, Grujic gets an equalizer and it goes to overtime, which never happened in that format in Austria. And then in overtime, Friedrichas in the 105th minute gets the winner for Austria Lustenau, who beat the odds. Austria Vienna, of course, will be very happy because... Uh, yes, they have to go now to Lustenau, which is a long uh, way out. But Lustenau will be sh will be completely shattered after playing such a long game already, and then having a place to play, to play, play twice against Austria. I would be surprised if Austria Lustenau uh, will make that one. But you know, we have seen bigger so so surprises. So let's wrap up the season here. We have the last. Austria Vienna is 60% favorite over Austria Lusna. I feel it's even uh, they should be even higher favorites. Overall, um, we see uh, the final standings. If we uh, look here, the season summary: Salzburg win the title, they do not win the cup. That goes to Sturm Graz. Last go in the uh, playoff of the Europa League, meaning they have the group stage of the Conference League already secured. And yeah, in the Europa League, it will be a tough ask, to be honest. Rapid Vienna go in the third qualifying round for the Conf Conference League and who will go in the second qualifying round? It's between Austria Vienna and Austria Lustenau. As I said, I think it will be Austria Vienna. Relegate is Reed from Upper Austria. Coming up is Blau Linz from Upper Austria from Linz. So as in, there will be derbies again. If we look here, uh, who had the best season? Definitely Sturm Graz was probably, probably the best team overall. Uh, Sal Salzburg. Although seeming wobbly at times, I think overall had also, also a good season. I think also last season can be seen as very, very, very positive. Um, establishing themselves as the third power, 
There was a short period where you could have gotten maybe the championship, but overall it was really, really good. Um, the two Vienna teams definitely have to ask themselves. In the lower playoff, it's a little bit hard to really assess uh, how good those teams were, but I think in the end, Lust, Lustenau and also Wolfsburg, although you would expect them to be in the top six, got a good result. And we also see the changes in the rating. Salzburg training a little bit down, but you know, Sturmlask, Wolfsburg and Lustenau being the big support. Let's also wrap up the season in Germany where we had, I want to start with the cup final before we get into the relegation playoffs. Uh, there's not much to tell you about this particular cup final because honestly uh, it was mostly conditioned by Frankfurt trying to neutralize Leipzig as much as they could. The few chances that were in the first 70 minutes maybe fell a little bit more Frankfurt's way but the Colomiani was a little bit off but it was a rather tedious tough watch. Uh, that in the second half then uh, became a pyro show in a way which was also kind of not uh, doing much. It really then turned on a defensive error where Frankfurt clearly had it cleared at one, one point but then Kunku can get a shot off that gets a double deflection and goes into the net. And that won the game because Frankfurt couldn't find the next gear and then Soboschlei uh, makes it 2-0 and seals the deal. Was a little sad end to the Frankfurt season, of course. Bayer Leverkusen will be most happy with that because that means they're going to the Europa League. Frankfurt in the Conference League, it was the last game for Coach Glasner who won the Europa League last season with Frankfurt. Never was doing a good job in the league. I think this season... The seventh place finish was maybe more than they could could expect it the way that they had like a ten uh, win a ten game um, not winning streak so lose, losing streak in the way uh, there was more in there for Frankfurt they had a they had a, had a really good uh, squad but yeah Leipzig repeat as champions and that is also a feat and I think Leipzig without the um, injuries to Nkunku maybe they could have pushed more in this league they could have potentially won the title potentially. However, we have to talk the relegation playoff and it, it was the expected one between Stuttgart and Hamburg which I did not really want to have. However, to get to this playoff, there was drama like crazy in the second German Bundesliga and this happened uh, like minutes after I posted a video on Dortmund losing out on, on the title because almost a similar thing happened there. Hamburg did the job, got an away win at Sandhausen. Third minute dump a goal that was it. They hang on to, to the win. It was all done now to Heidenheim, who were a point ahead. And they found themselves in the second half 2-0 down in Regensburg. A Regensburg team that was seriously in relegation trouble, if not getting relegated as well. Uh, don't, don't know it down. But they get a lifeline. I mean, that was in 57th, but immediately uh, on goal by Regensburg give Heidenheim a 2-1 and a lifeline. However, going into stoppage time, and the game in Hamburg, uh, the game in Sandhausen had had, had any, Hamburg had were in the Bundesliga. They were finally back. They had everything achieved because Regensburg beat Heidenheim. Even if once uh, when Beste made it with a penalty 2-2, that would have been enough for Hamburg. However, the stoppage time goes on forever. And now comes the drama. The because there is no 3G or whatever happening, because there's so so many people there. The fans are storming on the field. The stadium announcer says, we congratulate Hamburg to making it back into the Bundesliga. It was all over what had happened in Schalke in 2001, I want to say, or 2000. Uh, where Schalke also thought that they are, uh, they are champ champions. And then it gets through to everyone. They were celebrating. Then gets through to it. The game is not over yet in Regensburg. It is not over yet. And wouldn't you know it, Heidenheim get the win and get into the Bundesliga clients in the 10th minute of uh, stoppage time, get the winner and a huge blow for Hamburg there. I would have loved Hamburg to go in uh, at the expense of Heidenheim. On the, honestly, Heidenheim even win the second ball in the Bundesliga because uh, Darmstadt, who were already promoted, managed to lose 4-0 at Kreuter Fürth in a game that really didn't matter for them. So it was Stuttgart against Ham Ham Hamburg and on, on, honestly, while I really would like Hamburg to come back, um, Stuttgart was, was just a little bit more for me and in the first leg they completely showed that they are the much, much better team. Um, scoring in the first minute through Mavropanos already 
taking Hamburg apart, Gyuri C misses a, pe pe a penalty, and you think, will this come back to uh, hunt, uh, to, uh, hunt them? No, because 51st and 54th, Wagnermann and Gyuri C, it is 3 0. And at that point, it was clear that Hamburg need a miracle. Soon as they even get sent it off, I think Stuttgart, if they wanted, they could have completely destroyed Hamburg there. But they gave them a slight, teeny tiny, the tiniest of lifelines. And it actually seemed like it could turn because, like in the game in Stuttgart, there was an early goal in Hamburg with Kittel heading it in with a thumping header. However, Stuttgart is, it was. You could really see that this is a team that never should have been in the relegation trouble in the first place. It's a really well-crafted team. And um, they score equalizer through gear Z that was in the build-up way, 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 way before. There was an offside, so it was correctly called back. Uh, so Hamburg were there. They thought maybe they, if they get an early goal, but the early goal comes to Mio. Stuttgart makes it 1-1. He scores a second one, a little bit inciting the crowd in them uh, at the moment because the way he was celebrating didn't was not not a good pick. Big picture, giving four yellow cards at one point. However, then uh, Hamburg had nothing left, and Silas in the 97th makes it three one. Stuttgart stay in the Bundesliga, and so we can summarize the German league as well. Titles go to Bayern and Leipzig. We know it was the luckiest of titles, and you see it already. When I mean, you see with preseason expectation, it was a really weak season. In the Bundesliga, where both two teams finishing level on points, but 71 points is a really, really low points total for a champion. Union Berlin and Freiburg, I cannot say enough of how highly I rate their achievements, especially Union Berlin going to the Champions League now. Going from Conference League to the Europa League to the Champions League, it's just a fairy tale story. Bayer Leverkusen hang on to the sixth spot in the Europa League, and Frankfurt actually salvaged the season late on with the seventh spot. Again, I think there was more in there. Only two teams get relegated Schalke and Hertha. Unfortunately, two teams that I actually would love to have in the Bundesliga. Two massive teams going down. Two small teams coming up, Darmstadt close to Frankfurt, so there will be a derby there. And Heidenheim on the Baden-Württemberg-Bayern border, there for the first time in the Bundesliga. Not sure what I have. I'm thinking about that. It's, yeah, whether it's a great story or not, I really cannot tell you much. Um, we also see in the ratings, I was surprised to see the current actually had an improvement in the rating, but maybe European, I don't know. This doesn't make any sense with them finishing so low. But again, they were not rated that highly to begin with. That's the end of the season in the German speaking lands. I said that's just a playoff, but I'm not going to make a video. I may do a video soon on the history of the Linz Derby, but this might be a nice project for when we go into the um, summer break as well. And, you know, I have to build up the attention for uh, the Austrian Bundesliga. So there might be a video coming. Uh, look, look for that. But I'm not sure if I will do it this week, next week, or in two week, uh, two or in a month or, or so on. But it will come. I definitely wanna do that. Any case, please let me know if you wanna add anything to this video. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel for see more. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.